Dennis Grover and welcome back to Liberty and Justice for All. Tonight, we're going to talk about mind control. <laughs> now there's something that's, that's really heavy. Uh, all the research I've done, as you know, before each show, I do as much as I possibly can to find out if these things are real and who knows what about them. And the amazing thing that I found out about mind control uh, is that this is, this is old. Tonight I have, uh, as a guest, author Jim Keith. Jim, welcome to the program. Thanks. I've got Juanita Cox and Jerry Smith is going to help us out. They have done a lot of the research on this uh, subject. And to be quite honest, I'm going to start right off. Jim, what exactly, what, what, what is mind control? How do, you, how do you accomplish this? Well, you know, in ancient times, they used the sword, and they used the gun, and, and they used um, other methods like religion for uh, pushing the populace around and getting, uh, getting people to do what was wanted. Um, but in recent times, in the 20th century, uh, there are new technologies uh, that provide um, that provide the expertise to control people totally without their knowledge. Um, means of electronic entrainment, uh, brain control implants, um, methods of advertising that manipulate us uh, against our will. And this isn't science fiction. This is something that's very documented. Information is misrepresented. Um, that, uh, that takes away our degree of choice. Um, uh, the, the media does that all the time. Anybody who's had any experience uh, with network TV, with an interview or, or, uh, or, or whatever, um, is, is always uh, horrified to see their interview chopped into uh, <laughs> tiny little sound bites um, and, and is horrified to have uh, the interviewer uh, far more interested in uh, in getting one to mess up or to uh, or to reveal something embarrassing rather than getting at the truth. Right. Absolutely, that's man that's manipulating the information that we have available to us uh, to our mind. I talked to a lot of different people about this. They all came up with the same thing: harp. Now, harp used to be something an angel played, and that's what always came in my mind. Apparently, things have changed. You find out exactly what HARP is, where it is, and what's it doing there? Well, HARP is the world's, when completed, HARP will be the world's largest radio station, only it's not broadcasting for human ears. Its purpose is to send uh, a, a gigawatt of energy into the ionosphere to see what will happen. It literally to, to heat the ionosphere like, like a microwave warms a frozen burrito just to see what, uh, what, what will happen when this occurs. occurs. Tomography, which is a way of looking inside the Earth, kind of like cat scanning the Earth. And the purpose is, uh, uh, it was funded by the U.S. Senate to verify counter-proliferation treaties, that is to see if there were nuclear, biological, and chemical underground stations that they could find now on is, target. Is this openly funded? I mean, is this, oh, yeah. this isn't one of their black budget No, it's, it's openly funded. It's a, you it's can find it in the congressional record and in the, in the national budget. It's, and it's, it's listed under counter-proliferation measures. They call it HARP. Uh, HARP, H-A-A-R-P, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. Uh, hmm. Auroral is, the, is from the aurora, the, the, the northern lights. And the, the earth-penetrating tomography angle is they plan to turn the northern lights into a giant antenna to rebroadcast the energy f coming from the harps. Harp on the ground will broadcast into the ionosphere. Turning the, uh, they, they they're, they're hoping to tune the aurora and turn it into an antenna thousands mm -hmm. of miles long to rebroadcast a signal sent from the harp station. But not a signal we can hear. No, no, this sing signal will well, be that, in yeah, extremely low harp. frequency. What people are concerned about is this is like 90 electromagnetic broadcasting units that can, that can perform a variety of functions more than just researching the upper atmosphere. One of the things that concerns people is that many, many uh, studies have shown that electromagnetic broadcasting is harmful to the human organism. And HARP broadcasts at precisely these electromagnetic uh, frequencies that, uh, that are characteristic of humans. 
um, usually when the military is pioneering weapon systems, and I believe they also indicate this as a weapon system, they don't talk about those capabilities. They talk about scientific experiments. It, it, what people are concerned about is this can be, is a, is a, is a science fictional uh, weapon of incredible magnitude. Right, Jim. What I was, what I was trying to do is establish the, the, the face of HARP so that we all know that, that that is what the government says it is. And there are so many things going on with HARP. There are so many contradictions in the paperwork, so many contradictions in what it's doing and how it's being used that it becomes obvious if you do any sort of study on the thing that what the government says it is and what it is are two very different things. I don't things. believe have said that HARP is at mind frequency. Uh, and that's, that's where the problem is, and that also is where uh, the cellular telephone towers that have been leaping forward in our community has, uh, has a similar problem, and that's the, with the frequency. Yet the, the industry in both the HARP and or the cellular telephone tower industry claim that it's Oh, it's just the wattage. It's not the wattage. It's, it's the, the frequency, frequency, and right. it's at mine frequency, Thank and that's you. why it's we're here. Interesting that um, the harp uh, broadcasting these frequencies at the uh, at the frequencies of the mine. It's interesting with the way that parallels with documented CIA programs back in like the 1960s and so forth. It, it's all listed in my book, frankly. Frankly, it, uh, you know, it, it's hard for me to uh, 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 come up with the, with a jot and tittle on it and tell you all the scientists involved. But it's but it's in in my book. Well, yeah, I noticed that your book uh, is uh, you've got a at the end of each chapter, you've got a list of information. Sources. I list my I list my sources. And it's but it's uh, absolutely. Really, what I'm trying to say is that is that the CIA programs in the 1950s and 1960s, interestingly enough, were all about beaming words and thoughts and pictures into the minds of experimental subjects. Again, that sounds like um, that sounds like uh, the X Files. But but in in all in all truth, there are many aspects of, of that TV program that are true, and that's one of them. The CIA has long been interested in in giving us direct beaming of thoughts and words and pictures. And I documented it in the book. That's pretty scary. And, and the amazing thing on that is that th this, this line of research is broadly available in scientific journals. You can go down to the library and pick up the, the technical works by, by these guys that explain how they use microwaves to, to, to put things into people's heads and exactly how uh, successful they were in each of the experiments. In the last 50 years, DOD has intentionally exposed military personnel to potentially dangerous substances, often in secret. Okay. Oh, radiation releases at U.S. nuclear sites. Other exposure to ionizing radiation. Hallucinogen. Beginning in, in the uh, early 1950s, around 1951, uh, the CIA launched into a, um, a, broad, uh, a broad experimental program called MKUltra, uh, which had like 149 sub-projects on mind control, uh, utilizing everything from uh, hypnosis to, to drugs to uh, brain implants to electromagnetics. Most of the information about uh, those programs has never come out, and the reason is is when it was found out by Congress that the CIA was engaged in that, um, the director of the CIA at the time, Richard Helms, uh, decided it was a good idea just to burn all the files or just to shred all the files. So there's a lot about the MKUltra mind control programs uh, that we don't know about, but what we do know about is horrendous. Like I said, it was simply um, it, was, it was 149 uh, projects involving millions and millions of dollars uh, to create perfect mind control on, on uh, members of the populace. Um, it, it's a fascinating area, uh, but a very, very gruesome area because one, one tends to be naive. One, uh, one hopes that our government would, um, would have some sense of ethics and morals as you dig into this, you find that that just isn't so.